Hey friends, Pastor Mike here, and uh, my apologies again for the Facebook Live. If you tried to connect with us on the Facebook group for St. Luke Columbus for the Facebook Live today at 5, it didn't happen because um, we had some technical difficulties with my iPad, and we're going to figure it out, and we'll have a Facebook Live uh, next week, and we'll certainly let you know uh, when that is. And again, my apologies, and I was really looking forward to connecting with you live uh, seeing your questions, answering any questions I can, uh, and sharing with you some stuff. Um, so instead, instead of being live, I'm going to record this for you. Uh, this is a portion of what I was going to share with you anyway. Uh, we just don't get the interaction, live interaction, like the questions and comments that you have. So we'll do that next week. But in the meantime, here's a video uh, that I want to share with you today. And hopefully this brings you encouragement and uh, inspires you a bit. Uh, especially as we go down this this hard road that all of us are going down with this pandemic. We're all in this together, and so um, none of us is exempt from this road. We're all in this. And so we want to be an encouragement and support to you as you go down this road too. Uh, so as I was thinking about today, um, I thought about a story, an experience I had when I was a teenager. When I was a teenager, I worked at a radio station, and that, that station had two stations, two sister stations, one in Findlay, Ohio, one in Fostoria, Ohio. I worked at both. And when I was 16 or 17 years old, um, when I was working there, I one winter Saturday, I worked in Findlay, and I got off that shift, and I was driving home to Fostoria, where I lived my, with my parents. And so... Um, what happened was I was leaving Findlay and began to snow. And as I was driving on US 224, uh, and if you know anything about Northwest Ohio, Route 224 and that route between Findlay and the southern part of Faustoria, uh, it's a flat, uh, it's flat. Matter of fact, I think 224 goes to Tiffany, regardless, anyway. Um, it's flat and the wind is blows. Northwest Ohio is just windy. And when it's snowing and windy, it's difficult sometimes to see. Well, it was snowing a lot. And when I started the drive, it wasn't bad. But by the time I got on into the country outside Finley, between there and Fostoria, boy, it got really bad. And it was the first major snowstorm I had ever driven in. And I was scared. I remember uh, grabbing the steering wheel like this and just holding on and just staring, staring out the, um, the windshield, just focused, focused, focused. I couldn't see, see very far in front of my car. Um, it was a Mercury Lynx, it was a small compact car, and so it didn't have a lot of weight. And so I was very worried about falling off the road into the ditch and getting stuck there. Um, and I know that in those days, we didn't have cell phones. This is the 80s, we didn't have a cell phone that I could call my parents and have them come pick me up, or anybody. I'd be stuck on the road and there were houses far between on that road in those days, and so I would have to walk I would have had to walk in the snow, in the wind, in the cold, which I wasn't prepared for, to find help. And I was very scared about getting caught in that snowstorm. And so I just struggled to keep that car on the road as best I could. It slowed down, slowed down, slowed down. I remember in, as I was driving, my radio was on, and it was tuned to the, the station in Fostoria that I also worked at. My boss, Gus Sierra, was on the air that day. And his voice, he was a great radio voice anyway, he was a great guy, I really liked him, really appreciated him as a boss. But his voice and my famil familiarity with him became a comfort to me. And yeah, he wasn't speaking to my uh, direct experience. He was uh, helping me uh, by just being a comforting voice, right? So he was giving updates about the storm and about some closings, uh, and that, voice was just so reassuring and encouraging to me that I wasn't alone in this and that I could keep moving forward and literally I slowly made my way home. It took me a long time. My mom was relieved to see me. I was relieved to, to be at home that day. And I thought how, how similar that experience is with what we're experiencing today. You know, it's not a snowstorm, it's a pandemic. And yet the similarities is just like I couldn't see very far ahead of my car, I mean, my, my, my um, headlights only went so far. Then it was like a white sheet of snow. And there I could just barely see the road in front of me. Uh, I had to slow things down. We are all slowing life down. And none of us can predict what's ahead. We're a lot, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of uncertainty. 
a lot of worry and anxiety. We're like gripping the steering wheel. We're just keeping this thing on the road. We don't want to get caught. Some of us are worried about getting COVID-19. Some of us have it, or we know people who do, and we're concerned about them, and rightly so. And so we are in that place where there's a line of anxiety. We're worried about what's going to happen next. And we just want to get home. We just want to get on the other side of it. And there's going to be a, a day when we are, it's going to be a relief when we're all through this. But again, we don't know how long it's going to take. Just like I didn't know how long it's going to take for me to drive down 224 in that snowstorm. And my question then for all of us is, what is the voice we listen to? Who are you listening to? Or what are, where is that reassurance that you get during this stressful time? For me, in that time, it was Gus Sierra, his voice. Uh, and what is it for you? Who's helping you navigate this? Who's helping you move forward to keep that your life on the road, uh, to, to not careen off? What's, what's helping you stay stable and strong and encouraged? Hopefully these videos that Pastor Steve and I uh, share are part of that solution. I hope so. But, uh, and, and certainly our, we're drawing from God's word. Because for me, I have found a lot of strength in God's word. Uh, I'm pointing over here because my Bible's over here. Uh, from God's word, and many of us have as well. And maybe it's leaders that you trust desperately. But certainly, uh, across the centuries, God has always reminded us that he is our foundation. He's our strength. He is our, our voice in the darkness. He's, as the psalmist says, you light a light into my path. Uh, God lights the way for us. And so we can trust deeper in God's promises and God's presence with us and listen to his voice even more deeply and more profoundly through his word. I mean, I was thinking about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, he talked about the wise and foolish builders. He said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, Jesus says, is like a wise person who built his house on the rock. And the winds blew and the rain came, and the streams rose and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So in Jesus' story, I mean, that, that parable, look, everybody's experiencing, experiencing the same storm. Some of the people are more stable than others. And that stability for Jesus is coming from putting his words into practice by us. He is our rock. And, you know, in the midst of us uncertainty, this time of disequilibrium, where we just feel, un we, our feet don't feel, feel firm. We can find a firm footing in Christ, in God's word, by listening to Jesus. As in, on Transfiguration Sunday, we heard from the Transfiguration story where God the Father says about Jesus, listen to him, he says to the disciples. He says to us, listen to him. He is the rock upon which we stand, we build our life upon. It's the foundation upon which we live and move and we find the strength out of to face whatever we're facing. It can be that reassuring voice, Christ's voice in our lives in prayer and through Bible study and through conversation uh, around God's word. That's a place where we can find strength. And I also encourage you to read Psalm 121. And Psalm 121 um, is a, ver a psalm that was a journey psalm. It's called the Psalm of Ascent. It's one of a series of psalms of ascents. Ascent being A-S-C-E-N-T-S. -E that is, they're ascending to Jerusalem. And as the pilgrims moved their way to Jerusalem, they, the, of the Jewish pilgrims in the ancient uh, Israel would sing these songs, these psalms, uh, as reminders to themselves and to the others uh, as, as worship and, and, and reminding them that God is their, their provider, their rock, their source of life. Psalm 121 is a great psalm in that series of psalms of ascents, the journey psalms. Psalm 121 says this, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. Lean into those promises. Lean into what God's saying. He will keep you from all harm. He will keep your life 
He walked, Lord watches over our coming and our going, both now and forever. He's leading us down through this and strengthening us on this journey forward together. Uh, the Lord is the shade at your right hand. These are great promises. Live into Psalm 121, what the our, our ancient ancestors found hope and strength in, and we can find that today for all of us. So I want to conclude tonight um, and this evening, or whenever you're watching that, um, with a prayer from our evening prayer service in the Lutheran Book of Worship. And it, I think it speaks directly to our times today. Then I'm going to end with a blessing, okay? So let us pray together. Lord God, you've called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I printed that prayer um, above this video. So feel free to share that with us, with, with others. And my friend, please receive the Lord's blessing. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. My friend, we'll talk again soon.